In this video, we're going to focus on how, if you click on a button, not only adjust the data points here, but also adjust the labels here on the x-axis. So if I click on this, you can see it's changing now into different uh, colors. And if I click on that again, you can see now the x-axis is changing as well in different countries, but ch check out the y-axis. They change as well in data, and you can see this moves nicely. So let's start to explore how to do this completely with Chart.js. In this video, we're going to focus on one of the viewer's question, which was related on how to change the x-axis labels on click in Chart.js. And this was directly connected to one of my other videos. So in this video here, which was about creating interactive line charts in Chart.js 3, we have this line chart here, but eventually here, what was another question was related to how do we change these x-axis here and there was a question from Apoorva Despande. This is what Apoorva asked. How can I change the x-axis labels along with other data after clicking the button? So first of all, a, a special thank you for asking the question. And let's start and look now how we can do this. So what we want to do is we don't want only to change the x labels. We want to change them along with other data in the when we click a button. So we're going to create something quite similar. All right. So first of all, what we're going to do in here is we're going to get the default code here, which is all in here. And you can go to charges3.com and then you can copy all of this here. And if you want to understand the JavaScript of this, make sure you watch this video here that explains it in step by step. Paste this in here. And once you paste this code, we're going to put in here title. That's for myself, basically. Save that and then refresh, and there we are. So we have this here now. And what we would like to do here is probably basically similar to this here, where we're having basically three buttons here with different data. But then we want this data to show only when we click one of the buttons and want to make sure that the labels as well are matching. So what we're going to do in here is the following. I'm going to put in here, first of all, a button. Just somewhere here below. I'm going to create something quite quick. So we say here button. There we are. And then we say here, uh, this could be the sales. I'm going to just grab something here. And then we have here, we have the cost. And finally, we would have here maybe the revenue or something like that. And this will eventually be a function. So what we're going to do in here is we're going to create also a function. And in this function, this will be basically an on click that the moment we click on this, certain data will show. So let's start to make this function here. So we say here, show data, and I'm just giving it a name, but I would say make sure you have it very specific or show chart data, all right? So in here, we can activate depending on certain, uh, certain, uh, what do you call it? Depending on the click of the button. So whatever we click, that should be matching here. So to make this simple, we can say here, we get this and we put it here in on click function. Let's say on click equals chart data. And make sure we have here, of course, the quotation, double quotation here, of course, sorry. So now we have this one here. So on click data, and then here we could say sales. And then we later on we do an if, sta if statement with if sales equals this data, if cost equals that, etc. etc. So we're going to copy this immediately to create here for these as well. So we have here these arguments, and these arguments will help us identify the data that we want to show. Alright, so we have this here. And what I will do now is we're just going to copy this data because this will be our weekly sales. So we have one with weekly cost, weekly revenue, and we will change this here depending on whatever we want here. Because basically, if you want to change this, we need to focus on the labels here. So that's what we're going to do here first. So I'm going to create here a function. And basically, in this function, we're going to say uh, my chart which is this here, we're referring to this chart, and then we say yeah, dot .update. So everything in the update, basically, we want to put in something. But we must do it before the update. So we can say here, 
let's put in here a constant. Let's say this would be the cost. We can copy, oh, I guess we can copy all of this. Let's put in one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. All right. And then what I want to do, of course, here, when we say this, we can pinpoint this one immediately how we're going in the data. And remember here the data data, and this is the data comma. This is basically a shorthand. All right, just to make sure you understand the, a shorthand in the object. This is a ES6 option here. This is new in ES6, meaning that if you have data, which is an object, as data equals data, because the constant is the same name, in this case, we can use a shorthand data comma if this would be data number two no shorthand is allowed all right so data equals data so we use the here the shorthand and that is of course very important to remember because then we can say here my chart then we say dot data dot then we go in here we can say your data set because we're going in the data set and this data set is the index of zero because there's only one data set here in this array. And then we go here to data. Copy that and put it in here. And there you are. And then we can say it equals cost. So the moment we do this, we update this. It will update eventually our item here. And we could do here the uh, parameter. What is the parameter or the argument here? This is the argument. So we could say here, for example, um, uh, I guess the what is the right term for this type i'll just say type i'm not sure i think there's something better as well then we could say here a if statement if type triple equals cost in this case do this all right if that's not the case we could say here as well another if statement if type would be um, profit then we should show this all these extra numbers and if i'm not mistaken it was not even profit it was uh we have the revenue and the other one would be things revenue all right and we say equals revenue and i guess we could just move this one up here makes far more sense all right, so we have this here now. All right, so let me save this and double check if this works. So we have the weekly sales here. I guess this could be the sales. So we have the sales revenue and cost. Let's do that one as well. Cons sales, and this should be revenue equals this. All right, here, very same, similar. And I'm using if statement because it's easier to read them. It's preferred to use this over others unless you absolutely cannot use multiple if statements then you can use the if else but the lesser if else the easier to read so save this and if i refresh now there's no difference here and then the moment i press on this you can see now this updates all right you can see here the update here is very minimal because the only the digits are changing so how do we adjust this well basically the same structure but remember where is it located it is located in the labels so we can say here the following we can do in here you can make here constant and then i'll say here labels um or basically you can just say sales labels all right and then this sales labels would be equal this here And what we have as well is, for example, cost. We can say here, cost labels. And this could be production team or something like that, cities uh, or countries. Yes, the USA, Canada, uh, India, Philippines, Indonesia. Uh, what do we have more? Uh, I guess I'm just making up some uh, different countries. Uh, Taiwan and Mexico. All right. So if I save this now, and I'm going to put it in here, 
uh, let's see here, this is in the class, so we say the following here. We say here, my chart dot data, and the reason why data is, if we look at it, it goes back in the data shorthand, and from the data shorthand, we go in here, and then we pinpoint labels immediately. And then we say labels equals cost labels. All right, and then we have another one here. It could be the revenue labels. Revenue labels, and this could be just colors. Let's say blue, red, yellow, green, purple, pink, and black. All right. So we have this, then we have the revenue labels, and I guess the revenue labels should match as well. You can copy that here. Very similar. Then we say here, my chart data labels. And all we want to do here is the revenue labels. And finally, we have what we would say here, the sales labels, which should be exactly similar to what we have here above. These labels here. And we could even do here, that would be even make more sense if you would say here, constant let's call this the sales uh, labels that should be like this this should be officially like that that is far more clever to do and a better way to write your code it's cleaner and then we can say here this and I guess here this uh, the sales labels uh, we have revenue sales labels I guess this one we could just remove so we don't have a double and if I save this now let's double check all right, so we have here Monday up to Sunday, and then if I click on cost, you can see now the countries are showing up here on the x-axis. And finally, if you click on this, you can see we have now different colors matching on here as well. So this is basically how you can combine the text, the labels, and of course you could even do this one here in the title, or let me double check what it is exactly, the label, sorry, the data set label. We could even change that one if you want to do that. You could say here my chart dot data and then dot data sets zero and if I'm not mistaken label without the s the data sets zero and then label so data sets dot label and then we say your equals we can even write here a text cost of product. We can just make it very straightforward. I'm just writing here a string. Same here for the revenue. And then we say uh, here revenue of items. And I'm, I'm just making it up. And the other one would be the weekly sales or something like that. Or was it the weekly sales? Weekly sales. All right. So I save this now. Refresh. And let's double check now. If I click on that, here we are. You can see here immediately cost of product. You can see the different countries showing up here. And revenue here, revenue of items. And then you can see all the colors here as well. So with this, you can control everything as well. As long as you understand this structuring here, make sure you you uh, study this. And if you're really interested in this, but also adding up, making the values more dynamic, I highly recommend you to watch my other video covering that specific topic. This video is probably of interest of you as well if you like what I have so far. Make sure you check on this one here on how to add data and data sets in here because this video covers, and I'll put in here the link, you'll see it right now here popping up. It will cover how to add data sets, remove data sets, and playing with arrays in JavaScript and modify your chart in charges with those buttons and arrays. So make sure you watch this as well because this one is a nice build up and goes more advanced.